second session of the 2021 Strengthening Navajo Families and Communities Conference. This evening, we have Dion Mitchell, artist of Alugi Kisses. She is an artist, educator, and storyteller. Dion is a creator of Alugi Kisses, Butterfly Kisses, and she is originally from Chinle, Arizona. She carries the strength and resiliency and beauty of two rich cultures. Painting has always been her most favorite form of self-expression. Through art, she makes connections with diverse people, captures stories on canvas, and inspires others to live colorfully each day. Dion has been teaching for over 12 years, grades pre-K to middle school. And when she's not teaching her students, she may be sharing stories and as she guides you through her virtual paint party sessions. She recently celebrated her 125th paint party. Her sessions are guided but allow for others to add personal touches that are meaningful to them. These sessions are engaging, filled with storytelling, laughter, and gift you with a personal art piece to treasure. So get your paper, paint, and paintbrushes ready as I turn it over to Dion. And make sure you join us tomorrow for the third and final day of our conference. So thank you, Dion. Thank you. All right, so yeah, it's Ash A. Dion V. Mitchell Yanishia. I don't know Anna Shinagi, a Ashta Inishla, Nahiti Vashishin, Tabaha Dashiche, I don't know Hiti Dashinelle. So I am very excited to be here with all of you to create something beautiful. Um, my business name is Kalugi Kisses, and um, a big part of my business is to connect people through art, and that's what we are going to do this evening. Um, I started my business in 2014 and I really wanted to create, um, a community that in which people can come together to create a piece of art that was meaningful to them, something that had a story tied to it. And so what I'm going to do with all of you this evening is I am going to share with you my personal journey and my style of art along with um step-by-step -step instructions of how you are going to design your piece of art so in front of me i have a uh, watercolor paper and it's a thick paper it's textured if you have watercolor paper but you are using um like regular copy paper it's not going to um hold the the colors it's just going to absorb all of the water and your paper is going to become very thin and fragile and it will rip so you definitely want to use watercolor paper so i have watercolor paper here i have a sharpened pencil and to my right because i'm right-handed so you can put your materials um on the side that your dominant hand but i have some paper towels here to clean my paintbrush and I have a cup of water. If you are drinking a cup of water, make sure you don't put it near this water because I've done that before and it doesn't taste good. So <laughs> make sure you put it in different uh, opposite sides. And I have a snack. Um, I love to have a snack as I'm creating and I have some mandarin oranges here because I like to get nice and comfortable. I don't like to have to get up and, you know, get anything. Um, now watercolor paint comes in so many forms. I'm going to share with you, here is the most common popular type of um, pan of watercolors. So most of the time when you see watercolors, it'll come um, in several colors like this. Sometimes you get more colors. Um, and the quality of watercolor differs depending on how much you want to spend. And because it is my business, um, I definitely use these. This cost me $2. I have some that cost me $10. And, and I have a big one that I ordered from um, Japan, and this one cost me about $55. So they come in different varieties, different styles. This one is more expensive because the pigment is much darker, and um, I'm able to do a lot of um, different techniques with these. For example, this one doesn't have a lot of the same colors. This one doesn't have white, whereas this one does, and it's, it's very... Um, it's a really good high quality watercolor. So this white will show up once, um, like say I painted um, like a flower and I wanted to have like white polka dots. This will definitely show up on my flower. Okay, so that's just a little bit about 
the different styles. And this is the one that I am gonna use this evening because I just really like the way the colors look. And if you don't have watercolors, um, you could definitely use whatever you have. You can use crayons, colored pencils, markers, um, or you can just draw. So what we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna have you all draw yourselves. Um, art is a beautiful way to show self-care. And so a lot of times when we are doing things and we're trying to take care of ourselves, sometimes we think about expensive things, right? We think about going to a spa or think about getting a massage or getting our nails done, getting a haircut. And all of those things can really add up. Um, but for me, I've learned uh, that a lot of the self-care that I do is things that, you know, there are things that are free, going for a walk, taking a little nap, um, cooking something in my home rather than going out to dinner. And of course, creating some art. So what I would like for you to do is you're going to visualize yourself. Think about the shape of your face. I have a very round face. So if you have like an oval shaped face, that would be the shape you would go with. If you need to have a mirror or just your phone to look at yourself, then go ahead and do that. Um, I just like to visualize, um, meaning I like to sit and just kind of form this like invisible circle. And the beautiful thing about art is that it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not using like something that's round or, you know, circular to trace it. We're just going to freestyle and it's going to come out beautiful. So as I start seeing the shape of my face, I'm going to slowly bring my pencil down and really lightly. I'm just making this shape, the shape of my face. And I know you can't really see it because I did use a really light line, um, but because I want you to be able to see it. I'm going to go back and make it darker. You might want to leave yours light just in case you want to go back and erase. But for the purpose of this activity, I'm going to make it darker. So there I have my face. And I'm just going to create some curved lines down here for my neck. And there are so many ways to create a self-portrait of yourself. Um, if you are somebody who is an artist, somebody who um, enjoys drawing, or maybe you have a certain technique, definitely feel free to use that. Okay, Don't feel pressured to do the same exact thing that I'm doing. So from here, what you want to do is you want to start thinking about um, details you want to add. My style of art um, is unique in that I don't include any facial features. So if you ever visit my website or in my social media, I'll look at kisses. Um, I don't include faces on anything that I draw. Sometimes I do, but it's very, very rare. So I'm not going to do eyes and a nose and a mouth, but if you want to, definitely feel free to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my hair. My hair is a big part of who I am. Um, and a little story about my hair. When I was younger and growing up in Chin Lee, I did not like my hair because my hair was very different from all of my friends, right? And all of my friends were Navajo and they had straight, some of them had wavy hair, but most of them had straight long hair. And I didn't. And I got picked on a lot, especially when I was younger, like in elementary school. Um, I got teased a lot for having big hair and I just didn't like it. I wanted straight hair. I wanted hair that looked like my mom's and my sister's. And, um, and I did a lot of damage to my hair, actually. I straightened it a lot. Um, I flat ironed it a lot. And uh, I just really never really embraced my hair until I became an adult. And so now when I look at my hair, I'm, I'm grateful, one, that I have hair. And I'm also grateful that it tells a story about who I am as a Diné and Black woman. So as I'm drawing my picture, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about the details that I want to add to my picture. So here's my big old hair, big old shape of hair that I have. And one thing that I always, always wear are big earrings. So I'm going to include that. I'm going to draw some curves here on the side from my ears. And I think I'm just going to create like a long shape.
Now, if you don't wear earrings or maybe um, you, you have another accessory that you like to wear, like maybe you like to wear hats, maybe you like to wear um, a certain type of t-shirt, you know, you can include those details into your artwork. Um, maybe you have um, spiky hair or you have bangs. Um, you know, there's so many ways that we uh, so we look so diverse, right? So it's so important to um, include that into our art because that's who we are. And um, so because I'm not going to include any facial features, I'm going to really focus on getting my skin tone down. Um, and that's another thing that I've learned to embrace the older I get is how beautiful our brown and black skin are, right? Because like I mentioned earlier, um, I felt a lot of, um, like, I just, I, I really struggled with my own identity and my own self-love because of a lot of things that um, I got picked on for. And I had a lot of friends <clears throat> and I had really great friends who, you know, um, supported me and um, told me I had nice hair and all of that. But when you when you know, when you're young and you're growing and you don't hear that as often, it's hard to believe, you know, that that you are beautiful or that you are worthy or that you are enough. And um, I always kind of juggled with, you know, not feeling Navajo enough, not feeling black enough, you know, and not being fully accepted yeah. within either of those cultures. And um, so now I'm in a place where my art tells those stories in a beautiful and healthy way. And I'm so fortunate that I get to share my journey with other um, Afro-Indigenous people like me. And also not just Afro-Indigenous, but you know, within our own community um, to shine light on um, how we are part of you know, Native American culture. We are part of Black culture. So once you've added all your details on there, what you're going to do, um, you're going to start adding your paint. And because we are using watercolor paints, I'm going to start getting the paints ready. And what I'm doing is I have my cup of water here. And because I'm going to use these neutral colors, I'm going to add water to those colors. So I'm just going to wipe it off on the side. And I'm going to use this, like all of these colors, kind of blend them. Now, if your palette doesn't have a lot of different shades like this one here, there's a little trick you can do with this watercolor pan here. So I'm going to get my water. I'm going to put it in here with the brown. You want it to look like a little swimming pool. So you want to have enough water in there. And let's say you're not dark brown. Maybe you're a lighter brown. So what you're going to do is you're going to take out some of that. Doesn't It's not going to look like a lot. But trust me, that little bit is going to go a long ways. So if you want a lighter brown, it's kind of tricky to see. But I'm putting some of the paint here, and I'm going to take more water. And you're going to just, like, dilute it. You're just going to make it more watery, and that's going to make it a lighter brown. Okay? You can even add other colors. Like, if you have more reds in your skin tone, you can take some red and add it over here, too. Okay? Or if you want it darker, you can add more brown, or you can even add a tiny bit of black, okay? And black is the darkest shade, so you don't need to add a whole lot. All right. So going back to this one here, I like to start with light colors and then move on to my darker colors. And one thing I want to do is I want to erase this line here. One of the beautiful things about creating a self-portrait is nobody knows you better than yourself, right? <laughs> nobody knows how you like to wear your hair. Nobody knows all of the little, um, you know, features um, we have on our face, the beauty marks. Maybe you have a scar. Um, maybe you have a birthmark. You know, all of those things are things you start to think about as you start creating and dedicating um a piece of art to yourself. I'm going to do what's called wet on wet, meaning the paper is going to be wet 
and then I'm going to add wet paint. So I'm just going to brush, lightly brush, just my face. I'm going to do my skin first, and then I'll move over to my hair and other parts. Do my ears. So now that that area is wet, wherever I put the paint, that's where um, the, the paint is going to travel. It's going to travel to those wet areas. So I'm going to start off with this really light brown. And you'll start to see like it's spreading on its own without me doing anything. And it kind of has a lot of like yellow undertone in it. So I'm just going to move that around. I remember the first time somebody asked me if I'd ever done a, um, a self-portrait. And I just thought that was so weird. I was like, no, I'm not going to paint myself. That's kind of weird. <laughs> and so one day I actually did. And I learned a lot about myself. I learned that I had a dimple on my chin. I never knew. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's just kind of cool because, you know, you... You obviously see yourself every day, right? But then when you're really focusing and, and thinking about, you know, certain features or how you're going to draw, um, you know, certain parts of you, whether it's your hair, your body, your ears, you know, you really start thinking about all of those little tiny details that make you you, right? Make you unique. So I just added some, <clears throat> some darker brown on the bottom, and I'm really liking the way that looks. I'm going to try this color. It's like a red. I'm just going to put a little dab. Okay. So most of the time, I never really know what colors I want to use. You just, just got to play around with them. Sometimes they come out really great, and sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do that again. You know, so you never know unless you just play around and, and figure it out. And don't be afraid to. Don't be afraid to mix colors. Even if it starts to look a little strange and you're like, oh, man, that's not where I wanted it to go. It's all good. So I'm liking how it's looking, liking how the colors are blending together. So what I'm doing now is I'm just... I put my brush inside of the water so it's just a nice clean brush and I'm letting the water kind of do the work. It's moving those uh, colors around for me. I'm just going to do these little circles and blend it out. And then I'm going to move down to my neck and I want to create some shadows there. And I'm going to show you what it looks like when you're doing um wet on dry so i'm not adding water on my neck like i did with my face for this section so this is just wet paint so i'm going to go down here create a little bit of shadow under my chin just going to pull that paint and you want to be gentle with your brush There's an artist who I follow. She's an amazing artist. And when she works with kids, she tells them that to think of the tip of your paintbrush as like the ballerina's toes, you know, just like really elegant and light. And I like to tell my students not to give the paintbrush a bad hair day, you know, because we like our hair to look nice, right? Okay. So I'm going to add some of those lighter colors over here. I'm just blending, letting that water move those colors around for me. And I just love the way those, those tones start to look together. It's not about having perfect skin. You know, I don't want it to look like I'm, I'm wearing makeup or anything like that. It's just about getting the shapes on there and then adding adding your color different tones 
Okay, <clears throat> so now that I have, let me move this over a little bit. Now that I have my skin done, and my face and my neck, um, I'm just gonna fan my paper. I'm just gonna fan it up and down. Like so. Um, and the reason why I'm fanning it is, remember, like I had mentioned before, wherever the water is, that's where um, the colors are going to move towards. So if this is still really wet and I add black for my hair, that black is going to absorb into other parts that are still damp, okay? So you wanna make sure it's nice and dry. And because I'm gonna be adding a lot of black and brown, which are dark shades, um, I'm gonna do the hair, and then once the hair is dried, and then I'm, I'm gonna move on to my earrings. I'm gonna wear these like long, bold, turquoise earrings. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but like, you know, big old earrings definitely make me feel empowered. Okay, so I'm just gonna dry it a little bit more. So look, you get nice artwork, you're relaxing, doing some self-care, and you're getting a nice little workout in, right? So it's all about taking care of yourself. Feel the burn, a good burn. Okay, so while that's still drying, um, I'm going to move on over to my hair. And as I was talking about my hair, I said I was gonna use blacks and browns, right? To get the actual color of my hair. But, you know, that's that's the beauty of art is there's there are no rules. Just because my hair is a dark brown in real life, right? I'm creating an image of myself and how I see myself. So I'm actually gonna move away from those browns and blacks and I'm gonna come over here to this side here. So these colors would be our warm colors, right? These are the colors we would use for like we're doing the sun, lava, fire, right? So yellows, orange, and reds. These colors here, greens, blues, and purples, those would be our cool colors, right? So we use those for like if we're doing the grass or the sky or water, um, winter, we would use those colors. And then, of course, we have our neutrals like I use for my skin. So as I was fanning it, I could just, in, like, I could picture, I'm a very visual person. That's what helps me create my art. So I started seeing, like, pur purples and pinks. So I'm going to just go for it. That's what I'm feeling right now, and I don't like to argue with myself. So <laughs> that's what I'll do. Just going to go for it. So I'm going to add some water to my purple and pink. Maybe you want to give yourself some highlights, you know? All right, so take a deep breath and just go for it. And I'm just going to create this, like, texture because I have very curly hair. So I'm just going to, like, do this, like, wave motion. And I want those lines to go in the motion that my hair is going. So that's why I'm kind of curving it up and down like this. I feel like I need a little bit more water in there. There we go. And I want these colors to blend together. So definitely gonna use more water so that that blending magic can happen. And we're gonna do lots of overlapping. And if you, you know, are finding it a little challenging to um, do a self-portrait, maybe there's somebody, you know, in your family that you would rather draw. Maybe you want to do a picture of your your grandma, the Masane, or your Che, or maybe both of them together. A lot of the paintings I have feature my late grandmother. She is a big inspiration behind the artwork that I do. And by the time I'd discovered how much I loved art and pursued my business, um, she had passed away. So I never got to share with her in person my art. 
but I always imagine she's she's watching over me and proud. So I'm just doing some layering, just kind of going back and forth. I think I might add something else, another color somewhere. We'll see. But as you are working on your your self-portrait, really think about, you know, things that bring you happiness. If you're not sure what colors to use, what colors do you naturally gravitate towards when you're getting dressed, when you are picking out things in a store, what do you look for? Do you like neutral colors? Do you wear a lot of black? Are you a polka dot kind of person? You know, those are the things I think about as I'm creating art. Think about the person that I'm creating the art for, the art of. And once you let your, your mind go to that creative space, there are no limitations. You just go with it. Go with the flow. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry and then go back over and add more details. Um, and because the area around those earrings is still damp, um, I don't want it to blend into everything else. So um, you know how they say don't watch a boiling pot or a, a boiling a boiling pot? A boi oh my gosh, I can't remember how the saying goes. <laughs> Something like... Oh, a watch pot never boils. That's what it is. Um, so um, I say that because a lot of times when we're we're trying to get to the next step for watercolor painting, we're waiting, right? We're trying to fan certain parts so that we can work on another section. Um, but the beauty of watercolor paint is you can work in different areas while one area is still drying. So I'm going to go ahead and move down to my shirt. And again, if you're not sure what colors to use, think about you can do complementary colors. Um, complementary colors are colors that are opposite of each other on a color wheel, um, like green and red. That's why they look so good together during the holidays, especially Christmas. Um, orange and purple. And um, what's the last one? I said orange and purple. Um, Green and red. Um, I can't think of the other one. Oh, yellow and purple. Sorry, I was like, I didn't say that right. And then orange and blue. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with, um, I want to stay with these neutral colors though. Hmm. And sometimes they don't, you know, the the colors don't come to you right away. And that is okay. Yeah, I'm still feeling those cool color families. So I'm going to go with the blue because I got the blue and I got the purple. Those are all considered cool colors. And I am also keeping in mind that I said I was going to do turquoise earrings. So I, I don't want to keep on using the same colors. Um, so you kind of have to like plan as you go, but if using the same colors doesn't bother you, then you're, you're all good. Again, I'm just pulling that water and that paint to those white spaces, nice and smooth. And you can add a design on your shirt, polka dots, stripes. Maybe a just move it shirt, you know. 
All right, <clears throat> so I have my blue shirt there. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm checking in. You can even touch your art, you know, don't be afraid to do that. And you can also tell if it's dry by putting it under the light. And if there's a shine to it, I don't know if you can see in my camera, but I can see this shine right there. So that tells me that that's still wet. But I move up here and there's no shine in the hair. So it tells me that that's, that area is dry. So to get my turquoise, I'm going to mix some colors. Because if you ever look closely at turquoise, it's not just a solid color. So I'm going to just use this. It's kind of like a teal. It's going to go down the middle. And while it's still damp, I'm going to use a darker blue. Oh, this one's pretty. And if, again, if you don't have different shades of blue, you can use your blue that's here in this palette. Use your blue and then add just like a little bit of black and mix it over here. And that'll give you a nice little um, variation of black. So I'm just going to let these two shades of blues kind of dance with each other. Same on the other side. Again, if you're not doing earrings, maybe you're doing like a hat or um, maybe you're spending more time with your hair. Maybe you have braids in your hair. You know, those are the little details that I want you to spend extra time on. Okay, so I got those colors mixing and I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny bit of black. And because it is a really dark shade, a tiny bit goes a long ways. So I'm just gonna add little spots of black in there while it's still wet because what's gonna happen is it's naturally going to start spreading on its own. I'm going to use a clean, wet brush, and I'm just going to tap it because I don't want it to have like a really dark spot. I just want it to stand out a little bit more. There we go. Just going to let that blend together. And I feel like, you know, watercolor paint is very forgiving, meaning, um, you know, if you ever make a little mistake or you want to go back and fix something, it's kind of easy to do that with watercolor paint. There's been times where I've, you know, gone back and forth, like picking up colors and I've dropped like you know, a certain color on an image. And I'm like, oh no, but you know, if you work quickly and if you have a nice cup of clean water, you would just clean off your brush. I just do like a little shake motion back and forth. I tap off the excess water, wipe off the water on the lip of the cup. And then I just kind of, kind of like white out, you know, you just want to quickly pick it up and then dry off your brush and pick it up again to get that color off. Okay, so let's see, I'm just going to use a little bit more of that purple on the like underneath area to create like some shadows. And that's going to just give a little bit more depth or I could use black if I wanted to so to make this purple darker than the others I just um, use the same exact purple but I didn't add as much water I want it to be the darkest shade possible Okay, 
continue to overlap my shirt. There I go. And then to make your artwork even more personalized, um, I love to incorporate like other forms of expression such as writing. So um, I don't know if anyone has done a lot of um, like journaling or, you know, keep a diary or just like a planner somewhere where you can just, you know, record certain events in your life or just like to share your thoughts maybe write poetry, this would be a great foundation for you to um, include that in, you know? So once it's completely dry, of course, <clears throat> um, you could use a marker, you could use a pen, a pencil, and maybe write around, you know, your self-portrait. You could write a poem about yourself, um, or maybe you just write about how you're feeling. And you know, that's, that's such a great way for, um, for one, to connect with yourself. And it's also a great form of therapy um, because a lot of times we keep things bottled in and we never talk about it, we never share. And um, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes that can cause more harm than anything because we're just, you know, harboring all of those feelings and emotions and we never let it out in a healthy kind of way. Um, sometimes we, you know, get upset or we might take it out on somebody we love um, and or sometimes we might eat more. You know, there's so many things that um, we we might find ourselves doing that are not healthy. So I think, you know, creating art, um, whether that be, you know, doing something like this where you're painting or um, maybe you like to bike ride, maybe you like to go to the gym, maybe you like to play video games. Um, or maybe you like cooking, you know, there's so many different ways in which, you know, we can express ourselves. And I think as, as a family, that's really important to set those types of standards too. Um, I remember being a kid and we always looked forward to Fridays because we would have, um, like soda, you know, and that's not something my mom always had in the house. Um, but on the days where we had like a lot of food, like if we had like fry bread and soda and like a stew or something, we always had to, you know, do chores afterwards. We had to like mop and, you know, go outside and go clean the yard, um, something to be active. And of course, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, I don't want to do this. But I definitely am thankful that, you know, my mom set those types of rules for us. Because even now, as an adult, after I order a pizza and eat too many slices, okay, <laughs> I like to go for a walk so I don't feel as guilty. And I know I'm doing something healthy for my body, you know. So, anyway, I'm just kind of, now that it's now that my hair is dry, I'm just kind of adding more lines and textures. Um, and I don't know. To me, that's just very therapeutic to to do that. So now I'm going to add a different type of line. So now I'm just doing like these swirly lines to really get in some curly hair. And you could do the same technique, not the same lines, but you could, you know, do the layering technique when it comes to, you know, different hair textures, whether you have straight hair, spiky hair, an afro, you know, even if you created your hair in a bun, and still add layers to it. Now I'm like, man, I kind of want to dye my hair purple. It's kind of, it's kind of cute. <laughs> All right, I'm looking at the time. Good. You know, if you do create your self-portrait, I would love to see it. Um, you could send it to me on my social media. 
um, like Alugi Kisses. And I, that's my Facebook handle and also my um, Instagram. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. <clears throat> and again, um, you could add writing to this. You could add more details. I did take up most of the space. If you did a smaller version of yourself, um, you could add other things in the details. Maybe, um, you know, you have like a landscape scenery in the back, um, or maybe you add flowers. Um, if you're familiar with my work, I do add a lot of hummingbirds and butterflies into my pieces. And so um, I think that's something I'll, I'll add. I think I'll do like a hummingbird over here on the side. I even have, let me show you all this picture. This is a picture of me hiking up um, Paestua Peak here in Phoenix. And so my friend took this photo of me and I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool photo. I was like, I wish I would have smiled. And I zoomed in and look what is in the, the background. The cute little hummingbird just photo bombed me. <laughs> so I had to print this photo out. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And so, um, you know, I always feel like, you know, hummingbirds are are messengers of, you know, um, just just a reminder of the little things and to be grateful for all the little blessings around us, right? And so this was a really special day because I did not think I could make it all the way to the top of that peak. And it took me over an hour to get to the top. But once I was up there, you know, it's just the most beautiful view. So if you've never hiked Paestua Peak, here in the valley, you should definitely try it when it cools down, of course. So like October, November. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I hope that as you um, create your art, that you're putting that good energy into who you are, right, as a person. And, you know, adding those details that are going to be important to you, things that, um, you know, are, are meaningful to you. And if you do add words, you could even add words like on your face, you know, maybe like um, the lyrics to a song. So the the creativity with, you know, this type of art is endless. You can do so many different things. Um, and again, if you do, I would love to see it, you know, definitely share that with me. Um, and I do, I do more paint parties on my website. Um, there's always um, a link there where you can sign up to do a session with me. I do private paint parties. Um, <clears throat> I also have a shop with my best friend. Um, on social media, she goes by Still She Lives. Her name is Mackenzie. And we have a shop in Scottsdale. Our shop is called Her Medicine. Her is an acronym for Heal and Power Rise, which, you know what, I should write that on my art. Um, so Heal and Power Rise. And um, we hold... Uh, monthly markets there and all of our um, markets feature indigenous artisans from all over. So we have people who do silversmithing, we have um, artisans who do um, like skirts, do clothing, um, beadwork. So it's just been so cool to to be part of the indigenous, you know, artisan community and to be able to support each other, especially now during, you know, what is still a pandemic, right? And so a lot of people are still not gathering. And so um, we do our markets in a way where there's, there's social distancing. Um, we still sanitize, you know, and do temperature checks um, so that we are being safe. And because, you know, we want our community to be safe and heal. Um, but we also know as indigenous people, it is in our blood and our, our culture to gather and to support one another. And a lot of our artisans are, you know, um, hurting right now because that is their their main um, form of income. So um, but anyway, that's a little bit about our shop. And it's, it's growing more and more. And I'm just so... Um, proud to 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 be part of you know this this movement of of artisans and to also share a space with somebody who has the same goals and dreams that I do and you know to support one another in our personal journeys with our business 
So um, I cannot wait to see your art. And this is I, this is not my finished product, but I do want to add some more some more details to it. Maybe some more words and um, like I said, maybe that hummingbird will be on this side of me, like in my picture. Um, let's see. Um, let's see the shirt. Oh, the shirt. Okay. So I just left it like this. You can go over it and add some details. So let's see. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. I'm going to use some black. And I think I'm just going to go with some little black hearts there. And honestly, I think why I gravitated towards doing these little hearts is, you know, I this is going to be my first year not in the traditional classroom. Uh, I am an educator. I have been teaching for, um, this would have been my 13th year. And it's still a little emotional, emotional <laughs> for me to talk about because I do miss being in the classroom with kids. And uh, I miss, we used to do like, um, I created a day, it was called Dance and Draw. So everybody had to dance. I played like the best music, you know, Temptations all of that and the kids loved it and we'd get up and dance and draw and um, whenever they would leave artwork for me there was always a little heart somewhere on those papers so this is my dedication to my students and you just never know you don't ever know what the future holds and so I may be back in the classroom next year, or I may expand with my business. What I do know is that I'm gonna to continue to connect with people through art. So those are my little my little hearts in honor of my my students. And yeah, I really I'm really like the way it looks. She's cute. <laughs> and I gotta add my little I think they're called moles, but I call them beauty marks. So let's put them all over my face here and my neck. You know, the um, this is probably like a little a story that's a little out there, but you know the the marrow that's in the bone, like when you when you're eating mutton. My cousins would tell me that if I ate the marrow, that all of my moles would pop out. So. I never ate the marrow. I was so scared. I thought I was going to have all these like big old moles just popping out of my face. But anyway. <laughs> so there there she is. And um, again, I hope that you all enjoyed uh, this session. I hope that, um, you know, you, you continue to create beautiful art. You know, not just, you know, when you're feeling great and you're like trying to get the family together, do like a family night, but also, you know, during those times when you're not feeling so great, when you're not feeling like yourself, when you're not feeling pretty, you know, when you're feeling sad, to me, art heals no matter what you're going through. You could be celebrating, you could be, you know, going through a breakup, right? You could, cause that's reality, that's real life. Those things happen. Um, so continue to take care of yourselves, um, take care of each other and continue to live a colorful life and create something beautiful for yourself. And I'm reading the comments. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. And let's see, I'm gonna type something in the chat. So Kalugi Kisses, I put that in the chat there. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, 
you go to Facebook or Instagram, that's how you can find me. Orcalugikisses.com is my website where I have my artworks on there. Um, let's see. Thank you all.